are queuing up. We're going live here. We're queued up. Hi, Instagram. Hi, Facebook. Happy to be here with you. So I just felt, um, you know, I, what, I was, what we're going to be doing here is I'm going to actually be facilitating a little mini workshop. It'll just be a probably 15, 20 minute workshop. But, and I thought I would share a little bit as to what brings me here. Hi, Christy. Hi, everyone. Wave when you're coming in. Lovely to see you. So like I said, I'm going to be, we're going to be doing a little workshop here. We're going to be teaching you three key lessons that conscious women who all succeed in the area of love, they know and embody. But beyond that, I just want to start one with sharing with the, you these epic roses from the farmer's market. These are the antique heirloom roses. So the scent hasn't been hybridized. They haven't been hybridized. So the scent, they're still pure to their scent. And each one has a different scent. Their lifespan is about two or three days. But I just wanted to share this glory with you. Aren't they incredible? Every Saturday, Nicholas goes for a run and then he brings home roses from the farmer's market. So I wanted to just have them be here with us. So anyways, so for those of you that know me, you know that my name is Gabriella and that my deep love of life is the art of relationship. And for those of you that don't know me, my name is Gabriella and I'm a relationship specialist. I'm the founder of Extraordinary Love Transformational Programs for Women. I'm an ordained minister. And above all, you know, just my path has been one of learning how to repair. My path has been one of learning how to restore and one around learning how to bridge the gap, the divide that keeps healthy relationship at bay because I came from a, a past that didn't show me that this was really possible. And so today I live in Malibu in this beautiful house. Here I'm in my garden office where I see five private clients, long-term clients a year. I have a very beautiful life. I'm connected to a phenomenal path of service. I love what I do. We have two beautiful kittens who we adore. And it didn't always used to be this way. So I thought I would just share a little bit because I know that my story is we all have similarities. You know, the details may be different, but the fractures that we went through that broke our heart, we all have heartbreak, we all have known pain. And for those of us that are really called to a level of personal growth and awakening, we know that we're here to rise. And the way that we rise is we continue calling upon the invincible spirit within. And so what got me here was, you know, like I said, back in the early part days of my life, I did not have any sense of self. I grew up in an alcoholic home, like a lot of us have. I grew up where there was violence around, like a lot of us. I grew up with sexual abuse, like a lot of women. And so because of all of these things, it really created a lot of confusion around what goes into creating healthy relationship and as um, as uh, it's been Reverend Michael was one of the first people that I heard say years ago that it's pain that pushes and then it's pleasure that pulls but I know for me pain is really what was pushing me to the pain of feeling completely uh, like I had such a phenomenal yearning and calling in my heart for conscious relationship. I've been awake for a while, like many of us have been, yet I couldn't figure out, like the pain that would come out with men was unlike anything that would come out in any other area of my life. So I had amazing awareness. I had a really beautiful consciousness. I had an aware, you know, a long uh, awareness and understanding of my psychology, yet with men, I just would feel like a mess, just a total mess. And I was, you know, when I was dating, I've been with Nicholas Joyfully Partnered for many years now. We have been, we're engaged, actually we'll be getting married May of next year. We've been together, I think eight years now. So, so, but back when I was dating and back when I was really figuring this stuff out, I mean, trust me, it was 2005 and I was desperate. I was committed, but I was desperate. And I was fine. I was trying everything that could come my way to attempt to, hey, Nicholas, <laughs> different to Nicholas. <laughs> um, I was just really doing my best out of both desperation and a strong calling because I knew the experience that I was having with men, like it, there was a mismatch, like out in my world, all of these things were flowing really beautifully. Yet with men behind closed doors, there was such a mismatch. I felt powerless. I felt young I felt helpless I felt like he has the power and if I can only be a certain way or get him to see me a certain way then you know then I'll be happy I had no sense of self or I had a lot of conceptual ideas about a sense of self but I wasn't really connected to the 
let, let me say this this way. I had a program that was running that really deeply believed that I needed to be different in order to be loved. And so that had me posturing and adapting myself around all of these old behaviors in an attempt to be different so I could be loved. And so as many of us know, that's what it's like. We all often experience this. And to the, to the degree that we've been doing our personal development work, we see that. We know that there's old beliefs running. We know that there's old stories running. But the thing that I found is, you know, and here's the first key that I want to share with you here. And I'm going to give you some exercises because we are holding this as a little workshop. The thing that I've found is for those of us that are seeking conscious love, what does that mean? Conscious means bringing the light into the shadows of unawareness. Conscious means that, oh, we go into a dark room, which previously we couldn't see the contents of the dark room. We turn on the light. Now we can see what's in there and we have a conscious sense of what we're working with. We can organize the clothes differently. differently. We can organize the furniture differently. It's the same thing with relationships. We're all walking around just by the nature of our programming with all of these, you know, the proverbial skeletons in our closet. And it's not that we're even, we're even consciously hiding them, but due to the nature of our conditioning and our psychological makeup, there are ways that we are operating from our old programming that are radically influencing the level of arguments that we're having with our partners. If we're in relationship, if we've been single for a long time, but we don't want to be, we want to be with someone, but there's just no good men coming in or the men that are coming in aren't good matches for us. They don't you know, they don't look after our hearts or they're just not really, they're not um, long-term relationship material. So, or it shows up if there's these chronic feelings of like, oh, there's something wrong with me or why can't I get this? And so we all have these things that are operating in our consciousness that are seated in misunderstandings about ourselves, misbeliefs about ourselves, and fundamentally that cloud and obscure our ability to really show up in a relationship that's genuine. And it's not that we're trying to be disingenuous. And so this is how this, this stuff works. So the first thing that I wanna just really share with here is that conscious love really requests and demands and asks of us that we turn on the light of awareness as to what is playing out in our consciousness having to do with relationship. What are the messages that we received growing up? I call this in your art, in our intimacy model. Like we all have an intimacy model and it's based on what we saw, the grown-ups around us and acting, messages we received from our culture, all having to do with what's a man's role in a relationship, what's a woman's role in a relationship. Our intimacy model showed us how relationships were, were regarded, how fidelity was regarded, how boundaries were regarded, how, how honest communication was regarded. All of these things, all of these, this modeling was, we were absorbing this and taking this in at such a young age and it's gone, it's gone in in such a way that it influences the very eyes that we look from, the very eyes that we even view relationship from. So for those of us that are on a path that are seeking conscious love, it's really that that calling is tasking us to do our part to make sure that we're not being run by an unconscious model of relationship. And the only way that we know this is by looking into the mirror of relationship. And if in our relationship we're experiencing any level of repetitive stress or frustration or shutdown or whatever it is, that's going to tell us. That's feedback. That's saying something's going on. There's a mismatch. Because we all have issues. It's not about that. There's no, we're not trying to outrun our issues. We're not trying to deny our issues. We're not trying to sugarcoat them. But we do want to make, we do want to do everything within our power to shine the light on what these issues are. What are issues? They're usually limiting thoughts on the mental level. They're, they're beliefs, thoughts, inner narrative stories we tell ourselves. They're unprocessed emotions based on something that happened early on that we haven't really been able to process or get out clear out of our system it creates this these perceptions these perceptual filters that we see ourselves and others through and so in all of this territory that's where we're tasked to go in and see okay am I operating really am I operating in the truth of reality because for those of us that are that are 
on this path of awakening, we know what's true. You know, like we know the deepest part of our being knows that we are here for love. The deepest part of our being knows that we are not only worthy and deserving of love, but it's love that we came from. The deepest part of our being knows that we have infinite capacity to transcend, to transform, to rise. The deepest part of our being knows that by embracing and turning towards our challenges and opening our hearts to where we might have judgment, opening our hearts to where we might have pain. The deepest part of our being knows that's how we dissolve things. It's not by judging ourselves. It's not trying to push things away. It's not by trying to get away from. So what conscious love asks of us, this is key number one, it really asks that we let go of these old stories and really step into creating a new possibility based on what's true. And so while our conscious mind may may say, for example, and here's an exercise I want to give you, you know, if let's say if you're in an experience where your relationship where you're just not happy with your relationship experience whatever it is where you i'm i'm assuming that this is applying to you i'm assuming that you're here because of this so we're just going to go on that assumption so so if you're in an experience where for whatever reason hi <laughs> if for whatever reason you're in a relationship where you're just not happy like it's not working you're single you don't want to be you're in a relationship that you're not really happy with you have revolving arguments you keep attracting the same person different face but same dynamic whatever it is if, but if you're having this experience where it's separate from your vision because let's talk about this for a second so it's like we all have a vision of love and especially those of us that are committed to the path of conscious love like we're being called forward by something we're being called forward by this beautiful vision in our heart that is calling us to actualize our highest expression and how do we actualize our highest expression it's when we're in our loving it's when we're in our compassion it's when we're in our forgiveness it's when we're in our our ability to accept how we and others are. It's where we're able to drop down divisiveness, drop down separation, drop down blame, drop down, you know, lay down shame. And so here we, um, I'm getting distracted, so I'm seeing some ways this is good. <laughs> But I like I, I get it's such a it's such an opportunity to titrate being connected to what's like flowing through inside and also like digital interference, not interference. I love the waves, but it's, you know, it cracks me up because it takes a minute. So anyways, so so this letting go of these old stories. So we know on the deepest part of our being that we are made for love. We're here for love. Yet when we have these old stories that are operating behind our conscious mind that say, I'm not good enough. There's no good men out there. You know what? It's too late, whatever it is, we know that we have an opportunity. So the exercise that I was talking about, so just think about your vision of love. Like whatever it is, it's the vision that you have in your heart. It's like how you imagine, you know, like it's not the, um, and I want to distinguish this, and I teach this in my Foundations of Extraordinary Love eight-week program, which doors will be opening soon. I just I, I teach it in a way that's probably different from how you've ever taught it before, because I'm not talking about the Disney, you know, fairy tale of, you know, I want to be rescued by a knight, you know, whatever, a knight in shining armor. It's more, it's like, we want to slow down and tune into, like, what is this calling for love in my heart? And it's based on what is the quality, the shared experience I want to have in relationship, a shared experience of harmony, of ease, of joy. Second part is what is the type of person, what are the values that the person brings in that will help me actualize this experience? So it's, it's getting beyond being drawn by chemistry, it's getting beyond being lured by connection, and it's really looking at like what are the qualities that a highly, you know, that a good match for me for a long-term relationship would embody. Every, having to do with, are they clean with their money game? Are their finances in order? Do they take care of their bodies? Do they take care of, do they keep their word? Do they keep their, do they, are they kind to people? You know, these are the things that tell us about the values of the person. So when we're in this sort of myopic, you know, space of just going for chemistry or just going for connection, like we're myopic, we're only seeing, you know, the person in front of us and how, you know, how hot it is, you know, how hot they are, how hot the connection is. But instead we want to be looking at, are we walking in the same direction? So part one is what is the shared essence of relationship? 
Part two is, are we walking the same direction? What is the type of person that I'm calling in? And what are the qualities that they embody that would really assure that we're walking in the same direction? And part three is, who do I become in this relationship? Who do I become? Do I show up as a as a needless, wantless, you know, holding my voice back? Do I show up as collapsed and acquiescent? Do I show up as dominant? No. Like, but the, I'm talking about these things because a lot of us often do default to these when there's all of this all of this unresolved stuff kind of clanking around in the back of our mind. And so instead, it's like, well, how do I want to show up? So, so thinking about that, what is your vision of love? Because conscious love really asks us to get really clear on what we're calling in. And then from there, we need to look at our current reality. Because our current reality, it's also known as our comfort zone, our current reality is set on a certain uh, homeostasis set point for a reason based on our conditioning, based on how we grew up, based on the old messages and the old beliefs, the old assumptions that we're being run by, based on what our intimacy model that I was just telling about, how it programmed us. So when we have our vision of love over here that's saying, you know, it's this loft the incredible image that we're that we feel and we know it's real yet over here we might be having this experience of our current reality where our comfort zone is stuck in the proverbial you know vicious circle of where we're doing the same thing expecting a different res result but really nothing's changing and so that right there points us to recognizing that these things they don't change easily like when I say these things what I mean is our conditioning, like we are neurobiologically wired to repeat the script, the, the foundation and neural nets that were laid down in our brain. Like we are wired to keep running that loop. Like it's like the 405 highway here down in Los Angeles, where it's like the roads are laid down, the traffic's on them. And like, we're not gonna divert off of the 405 just randomly because we feel like it. Our brains and our conditioning, especially in relationship, is the same thing we have these neuronal pathways that are laid down they're used to thinking these you know regular thoughts and feeling these regular feelings and then it's it's having us behave in you know familiar ways and what is it doing it's creating more of what we don't want it's creating more of that which keeps us stuck in our comfort zone but the thing that i see a lot of people overlook is the power of resistance and how to work with resistance because it's really easy to get all excited around thinking oh i'm going to change or i'm going to transform this but but not understand how to cooperate with resistance and i'm doing a webinar tomorrow at 11 a.m it's a free um it's a free workshop it's about an hour and a half where i will be teaching you how to work with resistance so i'd love to see you there if you want to learn more about this so bringing it back so the first key that we're talking about is conscious love has a request for us that we make things conscious especially that which is operating in the background in our relationship experience how do we know the old stories or old beliefs are operating in the background of our relationship you know, that are affecting our relationship experience. If we are experiencing any level of repetitive argument, frustration, disappointment, confusion. And so the key number two is to expect resistance. Expect resistance. We, it's, we can't just suddenly go off and have a new experience without laying down the new tracks inside, the new neuronal net inside, where we can literally start thinking new thoughts, feeling new feelings, taking new behaviors. So how do we do this? This is key number three. You don't need to do this alone. The common mistake that we, especially uh, um, because we, a lot of us Americans, like we grew up, and this, this is applicable to a lot of cultures, but especially there's something that I've seen with Americans where we've come in with this entrepreneurial spirit in America. We're pioneers. And so a lot of us have this idea that we've got to pave the way and figure it out and do it on our own. And But because of the nature of our conditioning, because of the nature of resistance, we can't see what we can't see. And if we're talking about opening up to intimacy here, if we're talking about opening up to relationship, to connection, 
that inherently assumes that we need to let another in. We need to open to receive support. We need to stop, we need to let go of the stories that say that we can figure this out on our own. And we need to let go of the story that says that our issues that, you know, that we need to be fully healed, all of our issues need to be resol resol um, resolved before we can call in a loving relationship, because that's not true. We don't need to be alone. We don't need to be fully healed. We don't need to be perfect, you know, before we can have a beautiful relationship. All it asks of us is that we have a clear structure of support and that we have clear guidance where somebody's walking with us, shining the light on our path, you know, shining the light on our path, the lantern on our path, so we can see more clearly that which we couldn't see before because of the nature of our programming. And this is exactly what I do. This is what I love to do. I mean, this has been this has been my life's calling and the love of my life since the early 90s, to be honest. It's like this is the territory that I that I know inside and out. And I know that we can't do relationship alone because the 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 thing about relationship is we need one another. So that's just to consider. It's like, what is the support that you need? So bringing it back and here's the exercise I'm going to give you and I'm going to leave you with this. So thinking of your vision of love that we were just talking about thinking, you know, just tuning into the beautiful energy of, with that, like it's a beautiful calling in your heart that you can trust. And looking at your comfort zone, which might be your current reality, which is spinning around things that you may not be happy about, in there, the way that we interrupt, we bridge the gap and close the divide and interrupt the process of um, staying stuck is to get support. So whatever that is for you, it might be hire a coach, work with a therapist, join a group, read a book, you know, whatever it is, but to get support from another person. Because the biggest mistake that women in particular make is we try to do this alone, we stay invisible, and we think we can work it out ourselves. And when we are talking about opening ourselves and opening our heart to another, we need another to do this work with. So one way that I would love to invite you to do this work with me is to come to my webinar tomorrow. This It's a workshop, it's an experiential workshop, 11 a.m., I'll drop the link below. But aside from that, just really tune into who in your world do you know that you can go to that is a supportive guy that could really support you in, in moving out of this pattern, which resistance is what keeps us stuck in thinking that we're alone. So you can actually start creating a new experience. And it's possible. I am such an advocate for this is possible. If I can do it, you can do it. If I can put the pieces back together after years of sexual abuse, growing up with violence, growing up in really, really painful circumstances, if I can be in this experience where I am in a flourishing relationship, then it's possible for you. So with that, I feel to Let's just complete this with a prayer. I hope this serves you. So Father, Mother, God, just at this time, we ask that the presence of love touch the heart of every beautiful person and soul that is watching this and that they receive a gift, that they receive something that they can take with them that supports them in their ability to truly open up to the magnificence of who they are and to the magnificence of a shared loving relationship for the highest good. And we are signing off to go back.